right, everybody, how are you doing? I have missed all of you. Hopefully you are doing well. I'll give you a brief update on uh, what I've all got going on and then we'll get into the video. So I am now engaged. You may congratulate me in the comments. Uh, she said yes and, uh, and all of that fun stuff, right? So thank you, thank you. Worked hard, you should have saw the ring, gorgeous. Uh, in any case, oh, what am I doing? Uh, been doing okay during this whole uh, quarantine thing and there's that. And as well, there's also, um, also some bad news for the whole Nightwish community and the whole Nightwish fan community, right? Uh, and that's that we've uh, we've lost the Nightwish uh, mother and Nightwish grandmother and uh, and, and just a, a key member of the Nightwish community. Uh, rest in peace to our friend Anne. Uh, we will miss you very much. And uh, thoughts and prayers for the whole family uh, of Anne. I, I didn't get a chance to know her very well, but she did stop by this channel every once in a while. And all of my interactions with her were uh, a bunch of fun. And uh, she was incredibly knowledgeable about the whole Nightwish community and all of that. So a tremendous loss uh, uh, for sure. So rest in peace to uh, to our friend Anne. And uh, we'll do a tribute on this channel uh, for her and her favorite song uh, at some point as well in the near future. So make sure you stick around for that. Today we're doing While Your Lips Are Still Red live at Wembley. Uh, this is another one that has been requested before and uh, we're gonna get into it today. So let's check this out. All right, them people at Wimbledon. I had to say that too. Uh, you know, we live in troubled times. Everybody's seen that in the news and all that and blah, 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 blah. True. Everything we hear is bad. So what I'm telling you, if you have loved ones, you know, girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, husbands, children, grandparents, dogs, cats, whatever, canary birds or pit marsh and <laughs> kiss while your lips are still red. Okay. This is not what I expected. Electric guitar, okay. I see you, Troy. Look, he's got a PRS over there. This looks like he's holding an Ebo. That's to get pretty much infinite sustain out of your guitar. Uh, did not expect to see that here, and yeah, he is using a PRS. Very cool. Absolutely gorgeous song. 
gorgeous. To the Ebo, yeah. It's not how it's typically used, but it's used just to for the long sustain. He's he's got a whole like licks going on with it. That's that's cool. I've not seen that before. Well. Wow. <laughs> um I did not expect that. Very different song compared to what I was thinking. I was thinking it was going to be this brutal, heavy kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I just saw the top comments. It's... <laughs> Hang on. The top comment here uh, says, Nightwish, which instrument do you want to play tonight? Troy, yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, yeah, didn't, didn't see that one coming. Where was the other guitar player? I don't even know. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Very cool song. Very cool song. Welcome back, folks. Hope you're all keeping well. So today we're back with Nightwish again, and this is Seven Days to the Wolves live at Wembley Arena. This request comes from Home Gnome over on my Patreon page. Um, some of you, some, I'm sure, are familiar with uh, Home Gnome in the Nightwish community. He's uh, representing Nightwish big time over on my Patreon, so uh, make sure you drop him a thanks underneath. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get going. Eastern vibes. I love the way they just let this, yeah, just let it unfold, let it take its time. Great intro. The bass actually was the main thing. It was sort of capturing my ear, you know, after the sort of more ethnic kind of vibes. Um, let me know if any of you are familiar with the band The Tea Party. I'm a big Tea Party fan, especially their early stuff. And uh, there's not many people I've met in my life so far when I talk, talk about The Tea Party that know who, who I'm talking about. Um, but uh, yeah, if you don't know The Tea Party, please do yourself a favor and go and check them out. The, the band name sounds a bit daft. 
but imagine Jim Morrison singing over like the stuff that was in the introduction of that um <laughs> only more rocky you know so not as not as metal but uh yeah just slow brooding you know uh great riff love the way that the, the guitar came in and and sort of didn't get in the way of the main riff on the keys there yeah in fact i'm going to go back and take that in again that uh, was nice uh, totally unexpected Even the drum bass cool. This here, like at this point, I was already thinking of the tea party. One of my favorite bands. Here are those bass slides. Yeah. I think I go as far as to say out of all the Nightwish ones I've listened to so far, this is my favourite introduction. Love this. So straight time, simple time, um, all the da da da, all the syncopation in there it makes it so groovy, so groovy. Lovely choir in the background as well. We'll go back a little bit and push on. Though. Love the way the riffing on the guitar is linked with the the kick and the snare, all those wee stops and fills and interesting things there. You know, um, yeah, kind of decorative. Lots of space. Love riffs like that. Oh man. Man, I think that's their best song yet that I've heard. Yes, just doing everything I love. Something very gothic about this. Dark. I want to go back a little bit because the musicality and the instrumentations get me so much. Uh, I, I want to focus a little bit more on floor because I could just, I just, she just called me there for a second. This sort of delicate silver lining of a vocal up there. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm liking this duet thing going on here in the chorus. This is an anthem. I'd be smiling too, man. Dragging the bead like an absolute beast. Yes. He knows what to do with a guitar solo. They look at the tease in there, man. Right behind the bead, you know, like dragging it like a monster.
Yes. Just every note in place. I'm all for shred now and again, wee bits of sprinkling of it, like, but uh, it's just everything. Yes, just perfect solo, perfect solo, all emotion, all melody. <laughs> I need to change wonder pants after this. Okay, what's coming now? Eighties vibes here a wee bit with that synth. It's not even a synth. So you could, yeah. All right, I was talking shite there, but it sounded a little bit like one of those synths we have. Dun, 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 dun. It's maybe the repetitive note. Let's just think about that for a second. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I apologize for that. But you know what I'm trying to describe what I'm hearing? A delicate. And, and then match perfect. Like. Oh, boss battle time. Dark. It's kind of proggy, this bit. But is that guitar tone? It's so heavy. Like, what's he? Is he running a couple of different um, cabs at once, sir? Or is that what am he using? Like, that was meaty. Um, let me see. Do you know what I was thinking there? That section reminded me a little bit of like where Dream Theater would have something like that, and then the whittling would go on top. You know, whether it be sort of like an extended, you know, this here and get a wee bit silly. Um, no offense, Dream Theater fans, but. Uh, so what I loved about that was rather than being like, okay, now it's time for a million arpeggios and so on, which is cool for about 2.9 seconds. Um, they just, yeah, it's atmosphere. Just let music be atmospheric. It doesn't need the silliness. It doesn't need the silliness. You know what? Like That's a beefy tone. Double kick. Uh, this chorus, man, I'm going to be singing this for the rest of the day. I won't do it on camera, like that. Save it. Smiling, man. Worth its weight in gold if I'm smiling. Wipes always tell me to smile. Goggles. I'm getting sort of Park at the Moon, 80s, Ozzy Osbourne vibes with that guitar. Oh, 
What a riff. is a goddess like I would want her leading it I want her to be leading me in the battle Look at that performance. Everybody off on this. Superb. That's my favourite Nightwish one so far. Like, has to be. Has to be. Just, it brought me so much joy. You know? Um, loved it. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this, please do like, subscribe, consider supporting me on Patreon, and uh, have a look, flick through the channel. Plenty of Nightwish ones if this is your first time here as a Nightwish fan. And plenty of other bands as well. And some covers, guitar stuff, diddly 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 dee, all music stuff here. See you next time. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. And he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with the night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on what side of the world you're in. I'm Half-Life Sister, and this is my hubby Wolf King. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel and to another episode of Sister and the Wolf. What's poppin'? Thank you. We're back with another night wish. Yes, we Shoe are. Shoemaker. <laughs> Finally. Anyone that's following the news and knows what's going on, we're all, you know, in the States, we're debating whether we're going to reopen or not. And of course, the irony being that we are not ready to reopen because our managers, aka the government, Right. has not put any of the things in place that would allow us to reopen. Yet, they're Bam. saying we need to reopen because of the economy. Yes. So basically, we're squandering this time. And we're probably going to have a sub-second outbreak. I don't want to bring anyone down. Just 
Let's keep it moving. Keep doing what you know you should be doing, regardless of what the powers say. Of course. If they reopen your state, if your employer says that you don't need a mask or something, you know that's you bullshit. Exactly. We've got meat plants all over America Shutting that down. have outbreaks, things that shouldn't be happening, but are because the managers of companies, the managers of place, even Elon Musk, they're all not being their smartest right now, guys. Go yeah. back to the smarts here. Let's go back to smarts. Nightwish is giving us all kinds of smarts. It is. So we're going to continue with that. We've gone to the greatest show on Earth. Yes. Nightwish you. has exposed us to the creation of Earth. Right. And we've gone in-depth into that in our two-hour reaction. Then they got to introduce you to Carl Sagan. Oh, man. Now you know who Carl Sagan I is. I know who we be. They showed us the uh, great organizations that are helping to preserve our forests. Right? They've Never shown even us, thought about it. Yeah. They've introduced us to great music and that uh, Greek style of singing that Flora was doing yes. and music. Learning. Yes. Lots and lots of so learning. Much. Night Wishes so become much. the learning yes. channel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm excited and I'm ready. <laughs> I can tell. Oh. Might I say Shoot you look makeup. beautiful today? Absolutely ravishing. Thank you. Your hair is gorgeous. Thanks, babe. Nice well, and full. It's, it's shrinking though, you know. I don't know what that means. When I started, you know what it means. When I started <laughs> sure. before it sat down, it was like here. And now it's a nice little poopy Why does shrinking matter if it's so big? Okay, it doesn't matter. I don't understand. But I'm glad you like it. It looks amazing. Thank you. That's all that matters. Thank you. And plus, if you didn't tell anyone it's shrinking, they would, they would assume know. that that's the right size. Well, you know, that is true, too. All right. That's true, too. Moving forward on sideways, baby. Shoemaker. You ready to learn something new? Yes, I'm ready. I'm going to give you the story of Shoemaker. Now, does he actually make shoes? Just yes or no? I'm sorry. I just been, because I'm like, why would they make a song about a person making shoes? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> okay. I'm interested to know what the, the depths of this song goes. So go ahead and read it. Okay. You, you had me worried for a second. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. Now, Eugene Shoemaker uh -huh. is his name. That's what the, the song is about. We're going to learn about his situation. Thanks to our soldiers in the comments. Oh, so you've already seen a little I've bit of what a few, it's about? Yeah. I can't, some of the comments I can't read because there's too many words, but I do get around to them as soon as I can. Man, you're just full of bits today, aren't you? <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, well, Eugene's Shoemaker. Okay. okay. You sure you got any more bits before That's we start? That's it. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm debating whether I should do, like, my best Neil deGrasse Tyson. I know I can't do his deep, deep. bassy voice, but I'm wondering if I can maybe do his inflection. When I don't I'm, think so. When I'm trying to teach... So that I, people can difficult. understand the beauty and yeah. majesty of the universe. You have to use <laughs> Well, I always You're use my doing hands. Good. I'm all about hands. Good job. But Eugene Shoemaker. Uh huh. <laughs> he was a geologist and the founder of planetary science. I'm finding you sexier right now. Sexy. Oh, this is working for you. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Which is the study of planets, mm -hmm. moons, and processes that form them. Ooh. I, I like that. I'm gonna try to do this without laughing. Okay. Okay. He was born uh -huh. April 28th. April 28th. 1928. Okay. Shoemaker began his career as a geologist, helping the United States Geological Survey study impact craters. In the 60s, uh -huh. he became a major proponent of the hypothesis that an asteroid impact uh -huh. killed the dinosaurs. Okay. So he made all this up. Okay. <laughs> made, did you just say make I'm this joking. up? I'm <laughs> joking. Keep moving. So I'm you're listening. not done with your bits. I'm listening. Okay. He did this by confirming Daniel Berenger's hypothesis back in 1908. And what was that? The hypothesis that, in fact, an asteroid hit the Earth, uh -huh, uh -huh. changing the environment. It did. And causing the mass extinction of, of the dinosaurs. Okay. As well as of the life. But life goes on. It does. <laughs> Shoemaker would go on to join a team that began mapping the moon, cementing his status as the founder of astrogeology. So cool. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about astrogeology. Astrogeology. Because we know what geology is. How do you, how, in that time, how were they able to? Well, remember, when an asteroid hits the surface of the Earth. Uh-huh. It leaves. It leaves the minerals. It does. It leaves the evidence it behind does. it. It does. It does. So... What Shoemaker did, he's, he found that evidence. Similar to Behringer, again, Behringer being a miner at the time, this was a mining site. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So they, oh, okay. they, they recovered a lot of this mineral. That's interesting. Way back, yeah, way back then. Actually, even back in the 1800s, they were collecting minerals from this site. 
So geology is something our daughter loves very much. She loves it a lot. She <laughs> loves precious gems. She's, she's always even not so precious gems. She just loves she just beautiful loves. rocks. She's she got does. a thing for rocks. She, does. she really does. So, so did Shoemaker. And he loved the stars. Put them together, you got astrogeology. Makes sense? <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> he later began a relationship with NASA, okay. training astronauts, and along with his wife, Carolyn, okay. they discovered more comets, asteroids, and than almost anyone else. They're special. They are very passionate people when it comes to this. Hmm. The most notable being the Shoemaker Levy 9 comet, which crashed into Jupiter in 1994. Really? We are now tracking asteroids. We actually had a giant asteroid pass us by not a week ago. A I planet, a planet killer. No one even just told me. passed us by. A planet killer? Yes. Luckily, it understood social distancing and it kept kept away. <laughs> Baby, that's a good but, one. high five. You know, I, that was a good one. I feel so dirty. So tracking asteroids is a very essential, it's essential part and it's more of our things. survival. Yes, but we can't. Far more important than get some is, of the shit we do. Why does here. it? Why? Why does it matter if we can track, track it? We can't stop it from coming. That's the point. We should be putting At our this, efforts into things that could end life on Earth, but of course. We can just as easily end life on Earth with our nuclear warheads. We are, and we are, doing, we, we are on the teetering. It. There's a reason why we're less than two minutes to midnight. We are on the teeter, teetering, bleeding edge of insanity. And the only way we deal with it is we pretend it doesn't exist. That's exactly what we're doing. This is why sometimes I say if you really let reality sink in, like really let it sink in, you can become a little insane. So I can't blame people for perhaps ignoring some of this stuff that is out of their control. But at some point, we do have to, as a collective, uh, refocus and really get our shit together. And it's why our likelihood of success is probably pretty low. Anyway, oh, once again sidetracked <laughs> and i apologize don't apologize this is this is nightwish and this is shoemaker it's all their fault <laughs> <laughs> we're here to learn right guys yes of course our core audience our fans and know how we do it here so for all his achievements and i'm gonna look i'm gonna get a little serious now so okay. enough enough with the the neil voice okay but for all his achievements however there was one thing he could never do and what's that having spent much of his career studying the moon he dreamt of one day going there himself. When the possibility of a lunar landing began to look realistic, okay. Shoemaker applied to be an astronaut, Okay. but was declined. How could they decline him? He had Addison's disease. That's a disease that affects your adrenal glands. Ooh. So unfortunately, he didn't qualify. Oh my God, that hurts. Otherwise, that he would have went 100%. That hurts. Wow. It does, indeed, especially when he was quoted as saying, not going to the moon. Oh, don't do this to me. And banging on it with my hammer, with his own hammer. Okay. Was the biggest disappointment of his life. Oh my God. <laughs> I know, I know. And you can just see that because the geologist well, yeah. and his hammer, <laughs> yes. it's just a beautiful thing. Oh the, the amount of hours they put away into looking for fossils and things like that. He just wanted to go up there and just bang that moon oh, with his hammer. So, on July 18th, 1997. What happened? While performing research in Alice Springs, Australia, uh -huh. he and his wife were involved in a car accident. His wife, Carolyn, would survive, but unfortunately he passed away at 69. So he never got, he did a lot. He did a lot for science. He did a lot for the world, but unfortunately for him, his own personal heart, he never did make it to the moon while he was alive. You know, I. do you recall hearing about him when you were younger? Because I don't remember <clears throat> hearing about him or reading about him or learning about him when I was in school. But a lot of things I don't No, no, about. most of the stuff I know I never learned in school. Most of the stuff <clears throat> is because I, you I crave- You knowledge though. You're, you're the kind of person- it, it, Later in life, when, when I was in my younger years, I, I did everything I could not to be in school. But once I was out of school and I was able to learn in my own way, the way I wanted to, I noticed that I had a, a, a deep passion for reality. And part of reality is the universe and understanding it and our place in it. So knowing full well what Shoemaker wanted, which is to go to the moon. A student of his made a plan 
to put an ounce of his ashes into a NASA research probe designed to crash into the moon. So it was designed for one year to go around and okay. study, uh -huh. and then they were going to intentionally crash it into the moon. Really? His ashes were placed in a special polycarbonate urn built by a company that put the creator of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry. He was shot into space after he died in honor of his oh, yeah. legacy of Star Trek. Yes. So the same company that built that, uh, built his urn. They put an ounce of his ashes into it. They put a picture of the Behringer crater, which is the crater that he was famous, famous for. Famous that was the right meteor, uh -huh. meteor crater. And then the quote from Romeo and Juliet that you read earlier. Oh, that's okay. That's why I asked you to read it and do that voiceover. Gotcha. And I know you read it. Wow, this is really putting it into context now. I didn't understand <laughs> you, you, see, you see the connection, right? So he is to this day the only man buried on the moon. Now, does that mean anything for Shoemaker himself? As atheists, it doesn't. Uh, what it does mean, though, is for everything we do to celebrate someone's death or life, and, and memory is obviously for the living. So they in, indirectly helped him reach his dreams. He doesn't know it, but it does bring some special meaning to the people left behind, mainly his wife, Carolyn. Carolyn said, as a matter of fact, that this is so important to us. It brings a little closure in a way to our feelings. We will always know when we look at the moon that Gene is there. And that's what that's about. So in that sense, for for his wife, I think that was a very sweet thing that they did and uh, a way to, to honor his memory. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And that's why that quote that you read, you didn't really understand why you were reading it. But now when I read it to you... I may have to read it over. <laughs> I may have to read it over. <laughs> well, if you want to redo the voiceover, you can. But, <clears throat> but the point is that when you read it now, and when he shall die, yes. take, take him, him and cut him out in little stars. Yeah. And he will make the face of heaven so fine. Stop that... there. And when he shall die, take and... him and cut him out into little stars. Yeah. And he will make the face of heaven so fine. The molecules that comprise our body are traceable, are traceable to the crucibles of the centers of stars that manufactured these elements from lighter versions of themselves and then exploded, scattering this enrichment across the galaxy into gas clouds that would later collapse to form next generation star systems. One of those star systems was ours. These atoms and molecules are in us because in fact the universe is in us. And we are not only figuratively, but literally stardust. That's why they chose that quote, which is now, as you see, in a completely different <laughs> wow, context. Wow, yes! Okay? Yeah. So with that information, we will now experience Shoemaker. I'm glad that you all are here to experience it with us. Yes. We love you all. Let's go.
Orchestral. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with the night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Gorgeous ending. That was so cinematic. That was so. Oh, yeah, that was so soundtracky. Oh. That was lovely. My God, Floor sounded like an absolute angel. <laughs> yes. It was just pure operatic bliss. <laughs> the end there. What was she saying at the end there? We need to Google Translate that. She just kept repeating it. it sounded Italian. Yeah, it started it started out nice, you know, but it sounded like similar to to the other song. 
And then it hits you with that second half, man. What floor? So yeah, at Astra, there's like the, there's definitely you know significant sections to these songs where it takes a turn and becomes very symphonic and very orchestral and very thank you. <laughs> as soon as she started kicking in with that sweet high. It hits you. It hits you quick. It is so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. It that hit me the same way it it's... hit when I first heard her in Ghost Love Score. Gotcha. When I, when I first heard her do that chorus, and I could not believe that someone could make it sound that beautiful. Oh yes, it really felt this, like. This made me I mean... feel similar to that in the sense that I cannot believe how beautiful this sounds right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, my only, re my only regret, my only criticism is that it was, it, it ended. It was a short, yes. It she, ended too. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted. Oh, in a way, I'm glad it did though. I felt I was going to yeah, explode. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. going to implode. I have to mute, mute you when you're uh, trying to catch your breath there, but don't worry about that. I can oh. always mute you in, in post. Let you, let your, let your breath go. Wow. Holy crap. That, you know, is it resting with you right now? Because it's still resting with me. It's it's still resting within me. It's I'm haunting. not over that. Yes, it's, it's it is very much so. I'm not over it. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> and if I put if I put my little thinking cap on, and I think about so if the song if the song is dedicated to Shoemaker, uh -huh. I have to I have to believe that that ending is Shoemaker in his final resting place. Well, yeah, and, that's and, what I thought And what is. I envision when I hear her repeating that haunting line, which we need to Google, oh God. is him resting on the moon and the moon just kind of... Yes, that was him. He was essentially, it's like as if he was the moon, you know? That was his, that was definitely his resting place and he was a part of the moon, he was... This was a lovely experience. It was. Definitely worth the build up. It was. God, I wish it wasn't so short. It was too short, Nightmish. But that's always a good thing. Leave them wanting more. I want more. Yeah, I don't know what to, what else to say about this, though. I think we covered know. everything at the you beginning. You did a really good job. Thank you did so you much. Did you have any questions, by the way, on any anything you we covered? You covered a lot. Okay. You gave me a lot to think about and to actually re research for myself. Okay. Get more information. You did a good job, baby. Thank you. You're awesome. I aim to please. I'm so pleased. Okay. I like the sound of that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's, there's nothing else to say, guys. We did all the you talking. You guys know. Up you guys know. I mean, Floor's voice. She. <laughs> you guys know. There's, there's really nothing left to be said. That. It's just there's you heard something it. about the cadence you guys heard in it. her voice. That's it. You know your new, your favorite word. Oh wait. Cadence. No 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 no. We we were gonna Google what she was saying. Oh yes, please let's do that. Okay, so I Google translated it, and it is in fact Latin. Uh, Ladado. Am I pronouncing that right? Laudato? Laudato. Is praised, and C is and, and ad astra is obviously to the stars. So when you put them together, Laudato C ad astra, all praise be to the stars, or if I'm probably guessing correctly and screwing it up, is all praise to the stars. Yeah, all well, praise I mean, to the stars. We've got a Q&A. We do. Or you want yes. to set up a Q&A. So in the... Uh, on your social medias and in the community Instagram section of, I posted of YouTube. On Instagram, on Facebook, as well as our community. Does there anything you guys want to know? Ask away, baby. Ask, Ask as away. many questions Nothing's you off want. Nothing's off-limits. Nothing really, yeah. We'll decide if it's too racy or what have you. And even then. <laughs> and even then, you know, I'm very We're we, we can tend to be pretty inappropriate. Yeah, when, uh, very inappropriate. When, I'm an overshare. When cameras are not on us. So. Horrible. <laughs> So yes, ask away my love, yeah. please, okay? It's gonna that be fun, let's make it fun. Comments. Give me some good, fun, juicy questions, okay? Do what you got. Yeah. <laughs> okay, baby, listen, you've talked enough, okay? I'm good, I'm good. I'm this good was a great too. experience, great song. It was, it was. Thank you guys so much. What's next, though? Yes, we will do more. Uh, we'll, we will finish the album. And more best of Um But okay. I do have a lot of other reactions I have to edit. So guys, don't be mad just because something's being posted and it's not Nightwish. I know, there, there. Don't <laughs> give us a thumbs down for that now. You gotta, you gotta love us through it all. Love us anyway. <laughs> I don't know if that's happening. I know. Though. All right, my loves. I hope you guys have enjoyed this reaction video. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. That's so extra. <laughs> Comment below, baby. All right? 
Do not leave without subscribing, but also do share our content as well. And as always. As always. I love it, babe. Keep it metal, metal forever, baby. I love you guys. Thank you for loving us. Stay safe. Bye for now. Yeah, guys. Love y'all. Love you, Danielle. My husband was a geologist. He started out with a big interest in geology when he was just a kid. He looked up and saw the moon and he said, man's going to go to the moon someday and I want to be the one to go. Two, one, zero. A lunar prospector flew to the moon with Jean's ashes on them. They crashed into the south pole of the moon and Jean's ashes were with it. And now uh, Jean is on the moon. And when I look up there at the moon, I say, hi, Jean, are you having a good time running around? <laughs> Jean is the only person on the moon, <laughs> the only person with ashes on the moon. that <laughs> see Neil he can read <laughs>